Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, and uh, my name is Kishan Bat. I'm an employment lawyer at uh, Davenport Solicitors. And before I start, um, on behalf of my colleague Barry and uh, Davenport Solicitors, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for allowing us to speak on employment law issues. Um, today, I'm going to speak about uh, shared parental leave. Um, it's a, quite a hot topic. It's only came in force uh, this month. And uh, it's something that uh, the lovely marriage of the coalition has actually kept a, a kept a promise in, in terms of its manifesto. Um, and coming this coming general election, um, the, all the mainstream political parties are not going to change shared parental leave. It's going to remain. So um, what I'm going to talk about today, the key issues, I'm going to talk about what's actually fundamentally changing. Um, the current family rights that um, employees have at work. Um, the qualifying conditions for shared parental leave, um, and whether or not uh, employers can actually refuse or, or request for leave being made. Um, then I'm going to talk about the leave procedure, uh, how to avoid potential claims, um, and the claims could be for maternity uh, discrimination and shared parental leave discrimination. Um, I'm going to talk about more about shared parental pay, uh, and, and practical steps um, in terms of points to uh, watch out for when it comes to shared parental leave. Uh, and like any good lawyer, I put a, uh, a disclaimer there, so um, you know, be prepared for um, presentations, not for legal advice. Uh, every matter is of course different. <laughs> <laughs> um, employer's worst nightmare. It could be an employer's worst nightmare. Employment law is a minefield, uh, and that's why um, uh, we are here to guide uh, employers in terms of shared parental leave. Um, I recently did a case uh, about a year ago um, where uh, a company didn't really know what employment rights uh, uh, employees had. Uh, and the uh, mother um, was refused uh, maternity um, rights and maternity parent parental leave. Um, and uh, she took an action against it in the tribunal. I was representing the employee at the time. Um, and I won the case, uh, and the employer had to pay out £65,000. It's a small business, it's a, you know, it killed the business pretty much. But it's, uh, it's discrimination, discrimination claims in the employment tribunal are uncapped, uh, and it's very easy to uh, actually win them sometimes. Um, it could also be an employer's blessing in disguise. This is a fantastic opportunity for businesses because um, you know you could get a mother that's not going to be away for 52 weeks. She could be away for a lot less than that and can't return to work, of course, if she wishes to do so. Uh, and that can really help an employer, can really help a small business. Uh, it is also really important as well for employees to know that they have this right as well because they, you know it's a new modern world now and um, it's very good to see um, a parental leave being shared between the partners. Any any parents in the room? Okay, so surprisingly there's not many. <laughs> um, either you are not willing to admit it or um, you don't want your parents anymore. Uh, okay, in a nutshell, essentially, uh, shared parental leave. Um, there are new rights for parents and, and adopters as well. It doesn't just apply to parents, it applies to adopters as well. Uh, to take shared parental leave and, of course, re receive shared parental pay. Um, it's available in respect of children due on or after 5th of April 2015. So it's actually this came in force this month. It's very, very much current. And the aim uh, for shared parental leave is to create a framework that better supports modern working families. Um, and the legislation, this is a boring part, uh, it's uh, part of the Children and Families Act and it comes into force under the Employment Rights Act. Now, maternity uh, leave. Um, I want to talk about current leave rights. Um, maternity rights essentially allows, it has an entitlement of 52 weeks leave in total. Um, 30, not 39 weeks are paid and 13 weeks are unpaid. Um, and it comes under uh, statutory maternity pay. Which, which and the way statutory maternity pay works is that the first six weeks are at 90% of the average earnings, um, and then there's a flat rate for the remaining 33 weeks. Now, if the average uh, earnings are lower, um, then of course uh, the, the statutory maternity pay will be reduced overall. You have to qualify for statutory, statutory maternity pay. There's various um, uh, qualifications and, and, and entitlements for, for that. Um, so you, you, you know, you're not automatically entitled. Um, you also have adoption rights, um, uh, very similar to maternity uh, leave. Uh, you have 52 weeks, um, conditional on 26 weeks service. So you have to be employed for at least 26 weeks. Um, you also get, receive statutory adoption pay for 39 weeks, uh, and all at a flat rate, uh, about 90% average earnings uh, if lower. Uh, it's very similar to maternity pay, how, how that's calculated. 
You of course have paternity rights, which came into force um, a lot, uh, very recently. Uh, one or two weeks ordinary paternity leave you get with uh, ordinary statutory paternity pay. Um, then you get 26 weeks additional paternity leave if you request it. Um, and that comes under the statutory paternity pay guidelines. You get either ord ordinary statutory paternity pay or you get additional, uh, depending on the requirements. Um, you can also, of course, get unpaid parental leave, um, and that can be up to 18 weeks per child. Um, so the key question, I think the crucial question here really is, who will be able to take shared parental leave? Um, well, of course, mothers can take shared parental leave, fathers. Um, could be a spouse, could be a civil partner, or it could be um, a partner of mothers as well. Uh, and also adopters. Um, so it does apply to adopters, um, uh, equally to um, normal parents. For the, for the mother to qualify for shared parental leave, she must be entitled to statutory maternity leave and have curtailed that leave. So essentially, um, she, if, if the mother reduces her entitlement to maternity leave, then the parental leave, um, shared parental leave guidelines will kick in. She has to have curtailed that leave. And for the father to qualify for shared uh, parental leave, the mother <coughs> must be entitled to statutory maternity leave, um, statutory maternity pay, or maternity allowance. Uh, and, and the mother has also have to have uh, curtailed um, that leave as well and reduced it somewhat. Uh, what are the qualifying conditions for shared uh, parental leave? The further qualifying conditions would be that uh, the mother must have at least 26 weeks continuous service. So the mother would, would have to have been employed for at least 26 weeks continually. Uh, and the same, same applies for the father as well. Um, other conditions are that the father must satisfy an economic activity test. We don't actually know what that means yet because it just came in force. <laughs> um, but likelihood uh, of it in terms of statutory interpretation is that uh, uh, the father has to have means to support the family uh, somewhat, either by a job or any kind of other income. It could be investment income or even um, property income. Um, and notice has to be given. And this, this notice is where uh, the um, small, medium enterprises uh, need to um, pay particular attention to it and, and make sure that uh, they follow the procedure. I mean, employment law is all about fair procedure and fair process. Uh, and as long as those two, two guidelines, are, two principles are followed, um, then you, know, you wouldn't be uh, opening yourself up to such great liability. So how much leave can be taken? Well, in, in the case of births, uh, eligible parents can share up to 50 weeks shared parental leave. Um, the first two weeks of maternity leave are compulsory, okay? Uh, and the remaining 50 weeks of maternity leave will be available for sharing under this new regime. And an important point to note is that, uh, this is uh, a bit random, but the compulsory maternity leave period is actually compulsory for four weeks for factory workers. So factory workers actually get three weeks extra. Um, might, might apply to anyone that owns a factory. Uh, in the case of adoption, eligible parents can share up to 52 weeks um, shared parental leave. Um, so it's, it's two weeks more. Uh, and parents can actually decide how to share leave between themselves. I think that's quite a crucial point. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be 50-50, it could be 70-30, um, and um, you, you would work that out with your employer. Uh, and that's where things become a bit more tricky and you have to be a bit more careful about how you go about um, uh, granting that leave. Uh, and all leave must be taken within 52 weeks of birth, or adoption for that matter. So can employers uh, refuse requests for leave? Well, if an employee requests, uh, one continuous period of leave, um, this must be granted by the employer. It's mandatory, they have to grant it. If you don't grant it, then you're opening yourself up to, uh, the company's opening yourself up to liability. Um, there's a risk of uh, discrimination claims. I mentioned an example earlier on. Um, and if an employee requests this discontinuous periods of leave, so if it's not consecutive, um, for example, one month's leave followed, followed by one month's work, followed by one month's leave, um, then the employer may refuse uh, the request or suggest alternative dates. Now, this must be done within two weeks of request of request being made, so that so that the company has to respond within that period. And if the employer rejects the request and alternative dates can't be agreed, then the employee is entitled to take the total amount of leave requested as one continuous period, uh, unless she withdraws the request. Now. Um, the key thing here to bear in mind is that there's always an issue of comparators. 
Um, so if one employee is refused um, a break in terms of discon discontinuous leave, um, then you have to treat the other empl employee the same, essentially. Because otherwise, they, if they do compare the two employees and, and they're treated differently or unequally, then again, you're opening yourself up to liability and potential claims in the tribunal. So procedure, procedure, procedure. How do we go about doing it? Well, the mother gives her employer a curtailment notice, uh, and that's the particular notice you two uh, businesses have to pay attention to. And that comes together with an entitlement notice or a declaration. Uh, and that, that, must, that notice has to be given at least eight weeks before the start date chosen for the first period of leave. And, and the notice actually contains certain information and declaration from the parents. Um, of course, this only came in this month, so it, it, you know, it's a trial and error uh, situation at the moment. But um, the likelihood is that notice needs to have uh, information about how long they're going to be away for, um, you know, what uh, available cover there's going to be for while you're away, and who's going to be taking on your role. Um, and what the employer needs to bear in mind is that they can't uh, then give, take her role and give it to someone else permanently, because that would be again, again, that'll be uh, opening yourself, uh, the company, up to liability for discrimination claims. You have to offer, um, the, if it, once the, um, the mother comes back to work or the father comes back to work, you have to offer them suitable alternative employment. And that's one of the key um, principles of employment law. Um, the employer may request evidence, um, and it's quite important, we would recommend business, businesses to do this, um, to request evidence, uh, that could be birth certificate, details of other, um, uh, of other parents, uh, employers, if they have any other, uh, if they work for anyone else. Uh, and that should be done within 14 days of, enti of an entitlement notice being served. It's very important to stick to these time, time frames. If they're not adhered to, uh, again, you're gonna open yourself up to uh, a lot of liability. Um, further procedure is that a relevant parent gives a period of leave notice, uh, setting out the start and the end date for the specific period of leave. Uh, and that must be given at least eight weeks before the relevant period of leave. So it has to be done within um, eight weeks. Um, they may be given at the same time as the entitlement notice, but it's not necessary. So again, it's a quite a complicated procedure. It can be a, quite a minefield, but once it's adhered to and, and stuck with, um, life becomes easier for employers. Terms and conditions um, during uh, shared parental leave. This, this really applies in terms of the employment contract. Are you looking at the staff handbook? Um, it is mandatory for um, businesses to have an employment contract in place or written uh, statement of particulars. Uh, and the terms and conditions remain the same. The remuneration, the wages will essentially be the same. And employees are gonna be bound by any obligation um, uh, under that. Uh, now, if an employee is made redundant whilst taking a period of shared leave, parental leave, then he or she will be entitled to be offered alternative employment. Again, that's the alternative employment law. Um, the key question is, must employers offer enhanced shared parental pay? The answer is no. Uh, and and the, it, it, the question is, is there a risk of discrimination claims if enhanced benefits are not offered? Well, again, it's the whole comparative thing. So it's about comparing what's offered to other employees. What practical steps can businesses take um, to manage shared parental leave? Well, changing, changes to your staff handbook are essential. Uh, a lot of uh, policies and procedures are in place for um, shared um, or maternity leave or paternity leave. You do need to have a shared parental policy now. Uh, it's mandatory to, it's not mandatory to have that, mandatory to have it as part of your employment contract, but it's advisable to have it in the handbook. Uh, and also training for managers and, and having guidebooks available to, to manage a shared parental pay. Uh, I want to look out for making sure that managers are not making inappropriate comments when receiving or handling requests, making sure that managers handle requests to take discontinuous periods of leave, uh, making sure they don't take it inconsistent, uh, inconsistently, uh, and be aware of the risk of, of, of doing so. Um, so the last slide, that I guess, is um, to contact us if you do need help in this area. We are here to help you. Um, that is my email address. Uh, I guess we can circulate the presentation and you will be getting that. We also offer fixed fees um, for staff handbooks and review of your policies and contracts. Not many law firms offer this. We, we, don't, uh, we won't be charging crazy hourly rates for something like this. It, it will be a fixed fee for, for a review and, and for shared parental policy. Uh, and you can call me anytime to discuss. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Quantum Boy 